I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! The Coyotes are tanking for Shane Wright. There we go. And I'm buying everybody around on this one because it, it, they have to. In a, when you're in a total teardown, you should be trying to get the number one overall pick. Um, the Rangers got that when they got Kako. They got lucky when they got Lafreniere. But the Coyotes are the opposite of what the what the Rangers were. The Rangers, uh, the Coyotes were unlucky when they were trying to get McDavid. And it's just, this is a chance for Arizona to clean the slate and get everything right because uh, uh, Chica was just terrible for them. He was just <laughs> awful. Anthony. Uh, yeah, it's around. Um, you know, they've, they, they, they gave away Connor Garland and OEL for, um, for guys like Antoine Roussel and Louis Erickson. I mean, it's, they, they sold two of the best players they traded. Now Dvorak's gone. Um, there are rumors that Phil Kessel was possibly, you know, going to be traded. And I would think at some point in the season, if he's not traded beforehand, will be, he'll be gone. Yeah. Um, their team is just bare bones right now. Um, you know, they took on Andrew Ladd for crying out loud. I mean, they, um, they, it's, and look at their goalies. I mean, we talk about Buffalo's goaltending situation with, with Aaron Dell and Craig Anderson. They got, they got uh, Carter Hutton and uh, the, the young kid, his first name is escaping me right now, but Cousinar, who's like an unproven, unproven guy. So like <laughs> they're, they're definitely going to be competing with Buffalo for, for Shane right here. Um, and I mean, rightfully so. I mean, their, their arena situation is up in the air. Uh, they're trying to secure a new arena in Tempe. Um, you know, the, this is going to be their last year, Gila River Arena. Um, you look at their roster, and like I said, it's just, it's bad. It's bad, fellas. And um, yeah, <laughs> anybody who tries to say they aren't tanking for Shane Wright, you need to get a clue because, I mean, it's blatantly obvious that they are. Talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I, I left it yeah. up there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Just basically, yes. I mean, there's <laughs> what else are they going to do? The, the, Phil Kessel, like Anthony said, is probably traded at some point this season, if not before the start of the season. I'm surprised it didn't happen because there were rumors that Arizona would even be looking to retain on Phil Kessel to make a trade happen. And there would be a bunch of teams that would be interested in him at what three point four million, I think, because it's six. I think he's making six point eight against the cap right now because Toronto oh. has retained part of his salary. I think one point two million. <laughs> but um, I mean, you get Phil Kessel three point four million. I mean, he's still a top six winger. The, no, make make no mistake about that. And then they retained on OEL. They didn't just give away him and Garland. They Frigging retained on OEL. Like, how how much more clear can you make this than saying, oh, hey, we're going to suck. Not only are we going to suck for Shane Wright, but while you're at it, why don't you just give us Connor Bedard or Matvey Mechkov next year? Well, they're, they're trying to make sure that they get him. Because they, so that, that's gonna... literally what they're <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You, you know, on their roster, they only have, they only have three forwards – who have more than one year left on their on their contract of term? Clayton uh, Keller, Clayton Keller, Andrew Ladd, and Nick Schmaltz. Literally every single other forward on and their Andrew roster Ladd's is not even going to play. Only has one year left, so their roster after yeah. this year is be, it's uh, empty. Well, I mean, they have to reset almost everything in that organization. They went to Glendale. They shouldn't have gone there. They, nope. if they were in Scottsdale, so much better for their, in uh, for their their franchise. And you'll be um, closer to Mark. Yeah, yeah uh, there you <laughs> go. I mean, gonna get there eventually. The still a few years, still still years away. Uh, I got family. Even... I got family in Arizona. That's that's a sad uh, part. That's a sad part. They had three forwards that are on, that are on like under. After this upcoming season, and one of them is even going to play. <laughs> That's yeah. ridiculous. 
But you know what else is kind of sad about it is they this was a team that was nearly Did a you guys hear all that or no? We we got up. what was the important parts. Yeah. Um the uh this was a team that was nearly a playoff team in the last two years. Mm. Darcy Kemper was keeping them in yeah. for everything, and now they got uh I believe they got they did did they have Colorado's first? I forgot about that. But they got a, a, a slew of first round picks and second round picks. They can rebuild this pretty quickly. They just got to make the right decisions. The Coyotes have not been making the right decisions for years. And, you know, sometimes that's what happens when you hire a 29-year-old GM. Just guys in diapers. Guys, this is finally the <laughs> year. I'm just doing the wrong things. Oh, just completely. All, all of it was wrong. This is finally the year the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Washington Capitals fall off. Anthony, to you. <laughs> um. You guys remember Arthur Staple laughed with us about this uh, last week when he when he talked about the Penguins and the Capitals. Um, it seems like a lot of people have been predicting it for years. Uh, I mean, I mentioned that uh, this past year I predicted both of them to miss the playoffs and the Rangers and the Flyers to make it, and I was I was horribly wrong there. Um, but you know, th- this year um, I think. I think this is finally going to be the year at least one of them does. I, I currently have the Penguins out of the playoff picture. Um, More on know, that in a little bit. Tr- Tristan Jarry is just not – I mean, listen, he, I'll give him his due. He was, a, he was a, you know, he was okay during the regular season last year. He just collapsed in the playoffs. But he's not – I don't think he's particularly a good starting, reliable goaltender. Um, then, you know, they lost Panev and McCann, who are both – I think good player. Tanev's a pest to play against. He's hard. To, he's he's hard in all areas of the ice, and he can chip in offensively. And then McCann's a good. He, he's a good top six forward. And they lost those two guys, and they replaced him with Brock McGinn and Denton Heinen. I mean, Denton Heinen hasn't looked good since his first year with Boston. And Brock McGinn, you know, he's what he is. He's a he's a solid bottom six player. But um, I think anyone with a brain would take Tanev and McCann over those two any day of the week. And those are the only moves they made. I mean, yet yeah, they just signed uh, Boyle and Bartowski to PTOs, but I mean, those those really aren't anything significant. Um, and then, yeah, you could rest your laurels on that they still have Crosby and Malkin, and they'll propel you, which is true to an extent. And you know, Gensel's a good player. Latang had a good year, but I don't know in this division that's so tough. I maybe I'm eating crow again. I don't I don't see it with them. As far as the Capitals go. Um, you know, their team's still pretty much intact, minus uh, Brennan Dillon, uh, who went to Winnipeg. Um, but you know, Ovechkin's still Ovechkin. Backstrom is still playing at a high level. Uh, Oshie's still a very good player. Um, you know, they got Anthony Manta from the Red Wings, who I thought was fits the Capitals game pretty well. They needed to be heavier. Um, you know, Sam Sonoff looked okay. Vanacek looked okay. I think that goaltending is much better than Pittsburgh's. So I'll, I'll give the Capitals another year. I, I don't think they'll drop with the Penguins, but I, I will say uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty confident that this is the year where I get it right on the Penguins. <laughs> Phil. So, so to cap, I can't say round because I still say the Capitals are going to be a good team. So I guess I'll go beer there. Good, because I actually thought it was it was round, but then I remembered it's an and that's yeah. in there. Phil. Uh, I'm going to go beer. Uh I'm really not, and I, I, I don't. I, I put the Rangers behind them. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the thing with Pittsburgh is that their bottom six depth is now non-existent after losing guys like Tanev and McCann. And those, and like Anthony said, those guys are miles better than the guys that got to replace them in like Heinen and McGinn. And Heinen really hasn't looked good since. 40 point year that he had with the Bruins. Um, McGinn is really kind of more of a fourth line player than he is a third line player. I think he's one of the better fourth liners in the league. If you have him on your third line, you're all right, but it's still not a, a, a good team or, or a good thing to have him on the third line, I should say. But the big things in Pittsburgh are the, I, I would say the X factors are is Jeff Carter going to play like he played down the stretch and in the playoffs for them? Because if Carter plays like that, then that team's a lot better. I don't know if he can do that without guys like McCann and uh, Tenth being there. 
because that that was a a big part of that line. Uh, I I I just don't know if if he can really do that at this point. I don't know if he can carry a line on his own because look look at the depth that on that team. Otherwise, you have Sam Lafferty. He really anything to write home about? No. Nope. Evan Rodriguez. No. I mean, Zach Aston Reese is a physical presence. Decent fourth liner. No, no, again, nothing special. Casper Kapanen, to me, is he's got to he's got to take a big step forward offensively for this team to be a player. That that's another one that really sticks out to me. Um, and th- their defense, it's the same defense. I, I, I mean, it, it's an underrated group. They get the job done. They've got two puck movers in Latang Marino. Dumoulin's a solid two way guy, number two guy. I mean. Matheson, I think, is kind of garbage. So, I mean, if he has another bad year, that could really hurt them. Uh, but, again, does Jari play like he played in the playoffs or does he play like he played in the regular season? Because if he played like he played in the playoffs, forget about it. That team's going nowhere fast. Uh, Washington only lost Brendan Dillon. Otherwise, it's the same team. And the big X factor in Washington is Sam Sonoff. Does Sam Sonoff take a step forward this year, or does he just kind of pan, uh, kind of plateau, and he's like a, a bottom of the pack type starter where he's good enough to be a starter, but he's not really good enough to win you anything. So I, I, I think the firepower on that team is still good enough to make them a playoff team. Their defense is still decent, even though you're going to ask more now of uh, Nick Jensen. Uh, Michael Kempney's going to have to play the way that he played in 2018 when they got him. And I don't know if he's really got that in him anymore. And then Justin Schultz. Does Justin Schultz give you another real solid offensive season moving the puck and on the power play? So um, uh, Washington's, they're still going to make the playoffs. Pittsburgh, I'm really not sure on. So I- I'm saying beer here. And uh, unfortunately, because of the word and in this sentence, I am going to have to say uh beer as well the reason why is because i think one of them could fall off i don't think both can uh crosby hasn't mi- hasn't missed the playoffs since 2005 and washington uh sorry 2000 the 2005 2006 season yeah everybody missed the playoffs in 2005 <laughs> so um uh so that's for one I'm not in love with Pittsburgh's defense uh, at all. Malkin is going to be out with knee surgery through training camp, possibly into the regular season. Um, Jeff Carter, I think he had his legs after that trade, so he felt good. He was like, hey, he felt a little bit young, a little bit of He's jump. Um, but there's there's a lot of questions I have with just the Pittsburgh Penguins. Also, by the way, Tristan Jari, uh, I mean, Jocelyn Tebow, uh, it just all you got to do is shoot on his eye on his glove. He can't, you can't even get it. The Islanders figured that one out pretty quickly. Um, the uh, just, I'm, and Casey DeSmith, a full season with them, he might, they might be okay. Going to the Capitals, you can call them Capit Old. They have, I think, I think it's nine players on their roster over the age of 30. So eventually father time catches up. And especially when you play a bruising style. So I, I'm not, it's so hard to, to completely just write one of these teams off. But one of them is definitely going down. The Metro I think is the toughest division in hockey and it's, it's not going to be an easy division for either one of those teams. I'll say it's the Penguins, the ones that that go down because um, they're they got I think a few more question marks, and they're still an injury or two away from just completely missing it. Yeah, but I don't like hard that. To bet it, it's just so hard to bet against Sidney Crosby. That's part of the problem. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.